So this is the entire type the class which is parameterized by a string and that's the way it's written when vector is defined so don't be discouraged by the syntax as a lot of people prefer not to use spaces here and you know it's your preference it's your choice I I don't know I, I when I when I begin to see these long you know jam type uh, types uh, I, I, I don't know sometimes I feel more comfortable when I use uh, b when I space it space it up a little bit. All right. Next thing. Uh, since standard library is built upon those things which which happen to be something that we we may need to deal with. Um, it's possible to somewhat simplify this by saying, I have this long type that I'm dealing with. Remember, it is also fully qualified like this, right? The std vector, std string. So it's even longer to be to be truthful. That's that's even longer kind of thing. So and it looks a bit scary because <coughs> this is what it does. Bless you. This is what it does. Okay, there is a vector. Vector is par parameterized by strings. We happen to be using vector of strings. So we do specify string as a parameter for a vector, but it's a success story because same thing will work with vector of integers. Same, sa same way it will work with uh, vector of strings and vector of your own objects. Okay. Now, iterator is something defined inside the vector itself. Only the vector knows what kind of iterator to, to offer so that it can be used successfully with this particular kind of container. So, but you can do things like this. Type def, uh, type def this to be, uh, something like that, right? Uh, uh, vect, uh, vect iterator, right? Something like that. You can even sort of like, capitalize this and so you can do this and then you can rewrite it by basically saying vect iterator I already defined what this is and now I know that this is a, a vector iterator that I want to use and this is how I'm going to create it okay so there is this possibility of using a type def it's essentially giving a, a, a another name to some complicated type so it's a good reason to use type def because it can simplify something complex as this to reduce it to something readable in your application. And as long as all programmers are comfortable with this idea, you can, you can create these type defs. Remember, you can use type def in many uh, places such as uh, int uh, inch, right? So now you can say inch. Uh, inch uh, mm, uh, height, right? Equals zero, right? So now inch becomes just another name for int. Now I would say I would strongly discourage doing this, right? So you, you'd rather, you know, say this is an inch thing, right? Uh, in the comment rather than defining a type. Uh, I, I, I would prefer to know that this is an int when I look at the declaration. Because remember, this line of code can be sitting in a different file, in a header file, included by another header file, by another header file. This could be somewhere way, way, way uh, far away fr from this declaration. So this I would discourage of using. I, I don't see any adv advantage of doing something like this. However, uh, sometimes type, de type def can be very helpful in terms of it can uh, basically give a more readable name to a complex type. Yet again, let's comment out this. Let's comment out this. Uh, yet again, it's interesting that the latest version of, and I seem to be redefining it so many times. Another way of doing this is to saying,
So let me comment all of this out for now, since those are all little examples of type def, couple of examples of type def. Then this was our original example. I will put it right at the top, right? So this was our original key, original way we did things. Then we said, OK, you can actually create a type def and use that in your code to make some things more readable. But interestingly, you can use this with the latest standard. What it is is this. The argument goes that we have a, an object. An object knows exactly, and the compiler knows exactly what type of object that is. It's guaranteed, right? Because we have a name, we already defined it somewhere here, so we know exactly what this thing is, and right, this thing knows. Begin creates an iterator object and returns it back, our helper object that allows us to, to have access into a, a container. So therefore, who cares what this type is? Uh, let compiler decide what is the best type of this thing by saying automatically. De decide what, what this type should be, but the, you know, it's coming from this call, right? So this is yet another possibility, and I'm sure that a lot of programmers who learn C++ today, you know, may uh, basically laugh at people who used to do this a while ago, and this was the only way to do it. Because it makes sense, it's very safe, because everything that happens here is completely defined by, by the initializer, right? This initializer does exactly the right thing, therefore, why not ask compiler, help me, right? just decide what is the appropriate type for this iterator is and of course it's going to kind of do this for us right it's a, that's what it's going to do so let's see if we can compile and run it with this latest version okay so we compile it and we run it and so it, it does work right so but then again starting with visual studio 2010 uh, 2010 uh, Microsoft compiler does some support for the latest standard uh, which was officially um, you know um, signed and, and confirmed in 2011 so uh, the latest version of Microsoft compiler that which is which is which does very good support and uh, um, um, uh, conformancy to um, uh, latest standard is Visual Studio 2013. Mm, you can probably download it from uh, DreamSpark or you can download an express edition of it which is free, uh, offered free by Microsoft on their website. So anyway, uh, but this was an addition to the latest standard and you can see how helpful it looks like and it just makes sense and kind of, you know, makes code much more readable, much more readable I, I would say. So, uh, unfortunately, you cannot do something like this here because, you know, I mean, you, you, you need to specify what type it is and you need to do this. So perhaps, again, you could, we, could, we could use a type def and say, oops, say type def vector string. This time we don't care about the iterator. This is like a vector of uh, strings. How about this? Whatever. Right. So then we could basically be saying this vector, and then create this this vector, and we also created it uh, with uh, particular size. Right. So this would be a possibility of you know if you need to use this a lot. You may as well type def it someplace and then just use this as a type, right? Um, quite honestly, when, when I write my own code, what I do is I keep this lowercase, but what I do is like underscore t at the end. All my type defs I, I keep in this format. So that's what I do. It's your choice, but I kind of I want to remind myself that whatever this name is, it was a type def at some point. And so I use this underscore T at the end, 
when I create my, my type def definitions this way. Okay, but again, it's not a requirement, it's, it's your choice. I'm sure that other people have other styles and, and stuff like that. But it, it can be very helpful when, when working with, with components of the standard library. And of course, using naming convention of some sort always is, is always helpful. Okay, so shall we take at some more of, uh, of our, you know, perhaps we've covered already a lot of those things and we have to finish this uh, list operations uh, demo. So let's uh, switch uh, to that. Uh,